the past, Clinton County, Missouri was the western edge of the United States. Situated between two emerging cities, Kansas City and St. Joseph, Clinton County benefited from their growth. The Pony Express, the Gold Rush, and Western Migration brought people through the county, but the population that settled here put it on the map. Plattsburgh became the beef capital of the world. Lathrop was a major supplier of mules for the Boer Wars and World War I. Five railroads crisscrossed the county, and the nation's first north-south highway ran through Cameron, Plattsburgh, and Trimble on its way to Kansas City. Clinton County was home to David Rice Atchison, president for a day, James Harvey Birch, Missouri Supreme Court judge, Willis J. Wynn, president of the Cleveland Federal Reserve, and James Marshall, early leader of the Manhattan Project. Here are more family histories of Clinton County. My name is Stuart Jenkins, and uh, I'm here to talk about some family history. Uh, my mother was the one that got me interested in, in uh, the family history, and she had a lot of stories and, and did a lot of uh, ancestry work, and I uh, am uh, Kind of following some of her leads, and uh, it's been very helpful in in finding uh, more information about the family. Um, my uh, my great great grandmother was Mary Trice, and uh, she married um, Stephen H. Trice, and uh, they were uh, uh, farmers. And uh, Stephen H. Father was a lay preacher, and they were uh, their their farms were out around uh, uh, over towards Lathrop on 116, right up on 116. And uh, after they got married, uh, they were uh, they were married in the log church. And, uh, log church is still standing, and uh, um, their father, uh, his father, was uh, Stephen excuse me, Mary's father was Stephen H. Trice, and, and um, she was, um, or he was a lay pastor, and uh, one of the stories that my aunts, uh, Aunt Mary Ellen and Aunt Rebecca were, were the family history buffs, and, and uh, I'll talk about them later, um, but they, uh, they used to tell the story about uh, S.S. Trice, and he was a, a farmer and and uh, he preached on Sunday morning and uh, uh, one Sunday they were uh, um, he usually went in early to the service and uh, when he went in he would prepare the, the stove and get things ready for the service and uh, he, was, he wasn't feeling real good on, the, on the, that Sunday and he, uh, he got up and, and was doing his preaching and was uh, pretty much used to it. A lot of the people in the congregation were family, and uh, so he was he was uh, really getting into the service, and uh, he uh, he had a heart attack. And uh, the, the way the story goes is that he died in the pulpit. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. It's pretty dramatic, but uh, he uh, he did die uh, doing what he loved to do. Um, the, the Trices, Mary Trice's family, um, uh, b before the Civil War had, had owned slaves, and uh, we have some documents that, that talk about the, uh, how they are uh, deeds of, of purchase for people, which was kind of, kind of, of uh, a shock to me, and uh, the family never really talked much about slavery and, and uh, there were a few stories. My mom remembered uh, the story of uh, Uncle Thus who would come by uh, the, the house occasionally. He usually came by uh, Christmas and his name was Thusford Trice and uh, he had uh, been there, one of their people and uh, had uh, worked on, on the farm and, and uh, had stayed friendly with the family and, and uh, that was kind of an interesting uh, 
story, I always thought. Uh, and, and, and it was it was a nice story. Uh, there, were, there were some others that weren't quite as nice. And, um, I believe that, that uh, uh, after a few years that uh, this uh, George and Ann uh, were kind of part of the family. And uh, there aren't any traces much left around here. Uh, many of them have moved away. But if you look on the, an old plat map, you'll see that, that they own land up, up on 116. There were several uh, GT Trice and uh, uh, Bedford Trice, who had been the mayor of uh, Plattsburgh in, in uh, early 1920s, 30s. Mary Trice, my, my great grandmother, uh, married Curtis Deadman. And uh, Curtis's mother was, was Mary Ellen Scarce Deadman. Um, Mary Ellen Scarce Deadman uh, married Dudley Deadman from uh, Kentucky. Uh, one of the, the interesting things about uh, family and Many of the uh, members of the family uh, with, that had moved here, they, they most of them came from England to Virginia and then to Kentucky, and they came to Missouri out of, out of Kentucky in uh, around the 1830s. Um, there were, uh, this Mary Ellen Scarce's dad was Robert Scarce, and Robert Scarce was, was uh, in, in the 1830s, was able to Acquire, I think we have a, a document that shows he acquired, acquired a land grant from the U.S. government for the, the first property he owned, and he was pretty successful and was able to add to that land where he had a large farm. Um, I have uh, two booklets, uh, one about the, uh, uh, the bigger staffs. Uh, one of the pictures back here shows my, uh, my uh, great great grandmother who was uh, whose name was Rebecca Turner Biggerstaff and she married John Henry Trice and uh, those those two uh, uh, together uh, had a, had a kind of held the family together during the, uh, the late 1800s Curtis Deadman's uh, his father came from Kentucky and married uh, Mary Ellen Scarce, and uh, after they got married, they had some some family difficulties, and uh, they had one child, and that was Curtis Deadman. And uh, during during the time uh, after he was born, they they had some problems in their family, and they ended up getting divorced. Uh, Dudley Deadman went back to Kentucky, um, and uh, Mary Ellen stayed on the farm. And, her dad gave her a farm and a house, and uh, she never did remarry. But uh, she, uh, when she married Curtis Deadman, they uh, they had uh, the next generation was my grandparents' generation, and uh, my grandfather's was Trice Deadman, and he had a brother named Scarce Deadman, and there was Mildred, who was the oldest daughter, and. Rebecca and Mary Ellen. Now, uh, my grandfather was was a farmer, and he raised uh, cattle and hogs, and uh, usually had several people working on his farming operation. And uh, interesting uh, that in, in Missouri at that time, and the way the traditions and customs went, usually uh, uh, the men farmed and uh, the women stayed at home or if they got some education then they could uh, uh, do things like teach school and i have two uh, great aunts and we called them the aunts and that was mary ellen and rebecca and they were uh, uh, teachers and had uh, aunt mary ellen went to uh, uh, university of colorado at boulder and got a bachelor degree and uh, then she went on to get her master's from the U University of, of Michigan. Uh, Rebecca was a history teacher, and Mary Ellen was an English teacher. And uh, they, they taught in Plattsburgh for uh, uh, 
I'm not sure how many, approximately 15, 15 to 20 years, and uh, um, both were, uh, were uh, good teachers. I've heard good things said about it. They corrected my English quite a bit, and I needed that. Uh, the, uh, but the, uh, the aunts uh, were uh, members of the Christian church, in Plattsburgh, and uh, they participated in, in a lot of the, the uh, worthy causes around. And uh, my family believed in, in contributing back into the community, and, and uh, they were pretty good examples of, of how you do that. Um, Aunt Mary Ellen uh, taught uh, English in the high school. Aunt Rebecca was a junior high teacher. And uh, during the uh, war, World War II times, um, she uh, uh, was the principal and the superintendent in the school. And uh, so she, uh, she got some experience that uh, was the first time they'd had a woman in, in that kind of role and it, when things were different during the war particularly. But she, uh, she excelled at that and uh, was, was a pretty effective administrator during that time. Uh, she worked closely with Howard Dixon, who was the custodian, and uh, together they made a pretty good team. The ants uh, did a lot of traveling, and they believed in, in uh, increasing their knowledge of the world, and did a lot of reading, and, and uh, learned about uh, faraway places. And, and uh, during the, uh, the 1930s, uh, they were both teachers, and so they had time during the summer to, uh, to travel. And they uh, took a, uh, uh, one of their cars, and they had a pretty reliable car, and they were able to go to Mexico. They drove to Mexico City uh, during the summer. There were uh, four teachers that, uh, that were friends, and uh, during that trip, they, uh, uh, they, they hired a, a man to drive the car in Mexico City, and they toured, and and uh, I learned a great deal about the cities down there. And uh, it was a, uh, an interesting uh, experience to hear them talk about their trip to Mexico. And, uh, later on in, in life, they traveled to Europe and uh, they had been to England and Ireland and Scotland. And I think France, because they had done some history, uh, um, ancestry work, and particularly at Mary Ellen. And, uh, they had uh, found that connection with, uh, through the Scarce family that uh, many of the, of the family had come also from France, that there were areas of France which were English speaking. And uh, so when they immigrated, uh, they, they um, came back into England and then later the descendants of that family came to Virginia. So the, the ants were, were also travelers uh, you know, into their old age. They, uh, when they were both in their 80s, they traveled to Alaska on a bus tour, which was kind of an unusual thing. To, to, uh, they, they lived a long and, and a pretty interesting life in, in terms of uh, their education and their uh, uh, love of travel. One other story about the, uh, the ants, uh, they both um, taught in North Kansas City for, uh, uh, I think, about 10 years. And uh, during that time, they commuted and, and uh, drove back and forth, and they tried to get home every night. And uh, uh, one night, they uh, were in a snowstorm, and uh, they were out on uh, 169 between Smithville and Plattsburgh, and there's there's one place that's really a kind of treacherous place where the wind comes through, and and uh, they got into a, uh, a place that no one could drive through, and uh, the, the snow had uh, blown over the road, and they were uh, uh, able to uh, unable to get home, and so they stayed in their car overnight, and they had. Uh, enough warm clothes and they could keep the motor running most of the night and, and uh, the next day they were uh, helicoptered out of the, the situation, were able to get 
to where they needed to go, and it was a few days after that before the road was cleared. The Jenkins family, uh, my father's side of the family, um, came uh, much much like uh, the, the many people came into the country, and uh, they came to Virginia, and uh, at that time, many of the people traveled up and down uh, the, the east the eastern part of the country and, and looking for a place to settle, and they ended up in uh, western Pennsylvania. And uh, they, uh, the, the Jenkins had come into the country in the 1700s, and uh, the, the, one of the interesting people uh, was Aaron Jenkins, and uh, he was one of the original uh, pioneers that went into, uh, I guess you call them pioneers, they wanted them once to settle in Ohio in 1803. They were, they were one of the first families, the Jenkins family were one of the first to, uh, to settle in after Ohio opened up for uh, the territory for immigration. And uh, Aaron Jenkins was, uh, had a son, Aaron Jenkins Jr. And uh, he, he lived in uh, near Xenia, Ohio for uh, a number of years, and then after he was married, uh, him and his wife, Teresa, decided to move to Missouri. And uh, this was after the, uh, the Civil War. They didn't move until 1871 because they moved to the western part of Missouri, which had been closed to, uh, because of the border wars. During that time, uh, they, uh, H. W. or excuse me, uh, Aaron Jenkins Jr. passed away just before they were moving, and my grandfather Carl Jenkins uh, was agreed uh, with his father that he would take the family on to Missouri, and he was a, a man in his 20s at that time. They moved to the Carthage area, of, and. Uh, um, H. W. Jenkins the first was was uh, lived down there uh, in um, farm during his time there. Once again, the men are farmers and, and the women are, if they can get some education, are teachers or they they take care of the, the house and they also were helping with the farm because it was a pretty demanding situation for them in those days to uh, to manage a, a farm and uh, when they moved to uh, uh, Carthage they were they were able to get some land and uh, they stayed there for a few years. My, my grandfather Jenkins uh, never did, uh, um, or excuse me, my great grandfather Jenkins never did uh, 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 read his diaries and he had difficulty in adjusting to Missouri, but he had promised his father that he would take them to Carthage and, and uh, where they had bought land and started a new lot. Um, now his son was Carl R. Jenkins, and he was my grandfather. Uh, during the early 1900s, uh, my uh, great-grandfather and my grandfather, being part of that family, moved to Plattsburgh, and that, that was uh, something that happened uh, and they came here because uh, to Plattsburgh because of the trains and the commerce that was going on. H. Uh, w. Jenkins was a um, nurseryman, and uh, he had learned about horticulture and uh, had mostly self-taught. But he uh, learned how to graft peach trees, and and uh, they so they grew fruit, and uh, they wanted to set up a business in Plattsburgh and and run that uh, um, out of this area because they were, would be able to ship their produce to all over the country. Um, now, one of his sons, uh, Draper Jenkins and Carl R. Jenkins were uh, the, the two children of H.W. Uh, and Anna Cora Jenkins and uh, they uh, kind of grew up uh, partly around Plattsburgh and and uh, Draper married a woman from Independence, and she was one of the uh, uh, one of the Weeks family. And 
while they were married, they had my dad, who was H.W. Uh, Jenkins II, and he was three years old, and, and, and in, in the World War One, they had the uh, influenza epidemic, and uh, any of the women who were, many of the women who were pregnant during that time uh, died of this flu. It, it was the, the flu that was brought back from uh, World War One and uh, from Europe. They call it the Spanish flu. But she uh, uh, she wanted to do what she could to take care of my father, and uh, uh, he was three years old when she died. And uh, they decided to send him to his aunt and uncle, Carl R. and Dixie Jenkins in Plattsburgh. And uh, so he was raised there by them. Uh, and he was uh, a farmer, and uh, he had, uh, uh, his, after his mother passed away, they, she lived with Carl and Dixie. And Dixie Stoudemore was, was another family name in around Plattsburgh, and they had a pretty large uh, farm. And uh, my grandfather, uh, my, I guess he would be my grandfather, was uh, a manager for the farms. And, and uh, after he married Dixie Stoudemore, they stayed and farmed. And uh, that, that's the uh, legacy that they left. Here is that uh, they they had a pretty good sized farm and uh, Dixie was a member of the Plattsburgh Presbyterian Church and participated in uh, community act activities until uh, she died in the 1970s. 